these celebs. It's big business by day, secret lairs by night. It's not about pointing the fingers. It's not about playing the blame game. It's about faith, hope, love, and forgiveness. Welcome to WatchMojo.com. And today, we're counting down our picks for the top 10 real-life people who may be supervillains. Why don't you cut me loose? I'll open your meat shirt and show you your own heart. For this list, we're taking a light-hearted look at individuals who figuratively fit the mold of what we know to be the classic comic book supervillain. Make your dreams come true! Just do it! And while our list isn't meant to be taken seriously, we are excluding world leaders that some people have considered dictators, like Kim Jong-un and Vladimir Putin. Vladimir Putin arrives at the Kremlin to be sworn in for the third time as Russia's president. Number 10. Martin Shkreli. Started doing funny and fun stuff that, that maybe even extended that concept of, yeah, sure, I'll, I'm evil. Um, I'll be the Bond villain. He's known as the most hated man in America, and not just because of his smug little face, which, by the way, just oozes supervillain. His first evil plot? Raise the price of the obscure but life-saving medication Daraprim by over 5,000%. I probably would have raised the price higher. His second evil plot? Purchase the sole copy of Wu-Tang Clan's Once Upon a Time in Shaolin for $2 million, share it with no one, and then take on Ghostface Killa in a protracted Twitter feud. Dennis, I'm gonna call you by your government name. You're not a Ghostface Killa. I'm sorry. In fact, um, you know, most people don't ever try to beef with me. He claims that he's actually made Dara Prim available for free to those who need it. But still, just look at that malevolent smirk. Do you think you've done anything wrong? On the advice of counsel, I invoke my Fifth Amendment privilege against self-incrimination, and respectfully decline to answer your question. His whole allegedly evil empire could come crumbling down in the near future, as he is currently out on bail awaiting trial for securities fraud. So keep your eyes peeled for one epic evil meltdown when it does. You almost got away with it, didn't you? I know all about it. I can prove it. Number nine, Kanye West. Here's a musician that cares a great deal about one thing, himself. I'm like one of the top three artists in the world right now. In fact, Kanye West cares so much about Kanye West that he's actually raised the bar when it comes to the supervillain ego test. If I don't win, the award show loses. Credibility. Egotistical doesn't mean stupid, however, as Yeezy is something of a mad genius. Do you know anyone else who's asked Mark Zuckerberg for an obscene amount of money over Twitter, sells slightly torn denim as his own brand, and buys out Madison Square Garden just as a pick-me-up? We can't quite decide if he's something of a cult leader with legions of loyal followers, or the supervillain that excels in endless monologues about how great he is. I am the number one most impactful artist of our generation. I am Shakespeare in the flesh, Walt Disney, Nike, Google. Number eight, Donald Trump. Donald J. Trump is calling for a total and complete shutdown of Muslims entering the United States. In the world of politics, it seems that one must fully embrace the concept of public manipulation while maintaining sociopathic tendencies. You're running for president of the excuse United me, excuse States. Excuse me, I didn't start it. Okay, that's, I didn't uh, start uh, it. But sir, sir, with all due respect, that's the argument of a five-year-old. In this case, the self-assured Donald Trump more than fits the criteria for a mega supervillain, as that atrocious hairstyle most likely covers up the scars of some horrible experiment gone wrong. I don't wear a toupee. It's my hair. I swear. This guy has been in the public eye for decades. And in a time when Marky Zuckerberg was fiddling around with his social media thing at Harvard, Trump probably had an army of robots and death machines with his brand name painted all over them. So today, he's just being himself, an out and about supervillain that continues to terrorize America and maybe even the world as his ultimate plans come to fruition. A stab at the White House. We're going to build a wall, and it's going to be a serious wall. Number seven, Nicolas Cage. I'm going to steal the Declaration of Independence. By now, we're all too familiar with the devastating final sequence of the 2006 flick, The Wicker Man. <laughs> Considering the overly exaggerated acting of Nick Cage, one has to wonder if this was when he actually lost his mind and decided that if he wasn't going to get that second Oscar, then he was going to rule the world instead. 
Since actors tend to be consumed by their roles, perhaps Nicolas Cage morphed into the modern island supervillain, one who spends his days stroking cats, planning elaborate schemes, and killing his own henchmen when things don't go his way. You know, a typical Tuesday in the Cage household. Okay, let's run. Number six, Oprah Winfrey. <laughs> She's a talk show host, media mogul, and an actress of many accolades. Sat in that jail, sat in that jail down nearby, done rot to death. You might be thinking that she's just an exceptionally talented woman who's made successful ventures in many a medium. Or the more likely truth is that she is the genius supervillain that has fooled everyone into adoring her. <laughs> With so much charisma and presence, and a plethora of celebrity contacts, there is the dangerous possibility that Oprah may one day reveal herself to the world as its new savvy overlord with an army of famous faces as her minions. Blush, blush. <laughs> She'd also have a pretty snazzy weapon of mass destruction with a catchy name as well. You know, perhaps something along the lines of the Ozone. This sounds like political presidential talk to me and I know people have talked to you about whether or not you want to run would you would you ever probably not number five Mark Zuckerberg I mean I feel a, a lot of responsibility in my role and with all due respect to the philanthropic ways of Facebook's CEO you really can't blame us for wondering if he might need to balance everything out with some nighttime supervillainy it's not like Mark Zuckerberg would actively seek to harm others but given that brain of his and the international scope of his entrepreneurial endeavors, he surely got some type of underground, customized war room in which he cackles at all the stupidest Facebook posts while secretly poking confused users all over the globe. Mr. Zuckerberg, you fiend. There's no requirement that I enjoy sitting here listening to people lie. You have part of my attention. You have the minimum amount. Number four. Elon Musk. But you're trying to do good things and you're a billionaire. I mean, yeah. That seems a little bit like either superhero or supervillain. You have to choose one. No, he's not a cologne, but he is, in fact, an actual human being that not only co founded PayPal and founded SpaceX, but also serves as the product architect of Tesla Motors. Hey, if you named your company after the late Nikola Tesla, who is certainly one of the world's mad geniuses, then you're familiar with skepticism. And with all this space business and hopes to colonize Mars... It is a fixer-upper of a planet. Well, you know damn well that Elon Musk doesn't have your typical man cave. In fact, it's likely some type of intergalactic party house in which he floats about while simultaneously navigating a hologram blueprint for the next space endeavor. Yep, this man can do that. But it's something you keep secret like a true supervillain. We get the warhead and we hold the world ransom for... One million dollars. Number three, David Miscavige. Oh, no, 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 well, no, 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 He's been with Scientology ever since he was 16. After dropping out of high school, with his dad's permission, to join L. Ron Hubbard's fraternal religious order, the Sea Org. Then, shortly after Hubbard's 1986 death, David Miscavige became the head of Scientology, taking on the rank of captain and inheriting the late founder's massive group of powerful and devoted followers. The 24th of January, AD 36, L. Ron Hubbard discarded the body he had used in this lifetime for 74 years. Though the Church of Scientology celebrates him, we can't ignore Miscavige's reported temper, as he's been accused of harassment, physical assault, and illegal and immoral acts. Well, I'm sorry, no, I'm sorry, that story doesn't, doesn't hold water because I'll tell you, from my perspective, the person getting harassed is myself in the church. He's even got a supervillain-esque lair in the impressive and undoubtedly expensive Religious Technology Center headquarters, which, you gotta admit, is kinda creepy looking as well. Miscavige would sit in this 15 by 15 room, cameras of every session. You can flip in between them and he was watching these things and it was for training purposes. Number two, Rupert Murdoch. Now here's another business mogul, but one who's of the more elderly ilk. In other words, he's the antithesis of the vibrant and colorful supervillain, as Rupert Murdoch surely roams the streets in black and white. Do, do you like the feeling of power you have as a newspaper proprietor, of being able to sort of formulate policies for a large number of newspapers in every state of Australia? Well, there's only one honest answer to that, of course, and that's yes. 
Australian-born with a fancy Oxford education, albeit in Worcester College, he once revolutionized the newspaper industry, which essentially makes him the big daddy of the written word, among other things. I don't believe that the people who read the Times are any better than the people who read the Sun. I just believe they're different. Murdoch is the intellectual supervillain, one who chooses his projects wisely and spends more of his time gazing at classic novels while puffing on expensive cigars. What do you get? Me? Oh, nothing. Just exclusive broadcasting rights in China for the next hundred years. Cross this man and you'll end up in the obituaries, theoretically. There's no news like bad news. Before we unveil our number one pick, here are some honorable mentions. Because I don't know how the internet works. You know, I don't know how to, I don't, you know. I'm, it kind of tells you who, what you did. I'm yeah, afraid that I might do something like really wrong. Can the quarterback position be evaluated this week? <laughs> Listen, it was a human moment, okay? I've gone on stage a couple hundred times in my life. <laughs> Number 1. Peter Thiel This billionaire German-American entrepreneur may have co-founded PayPal with another entry on our list, Elon Musk, and he became Facebook's first outside investor. But the self-proclaimed libertarian also once declared that he, quote, no longer believed that freedom and democracy are compatible. Then in 2016, it was revealed that Thiel gave out millions of dollars to back several lawsuits against Gawker Media, including Hulk Hogan's sex tape scandal. Though Thiel claimed he did this to stop the press's privacy violations, he could have possibly been driven by the desire for revenge as well, especially considering the blog discussed his homosexuality in 2007. After all, only a supervillain would call himself a libertarian that openly supports freedom of the press while privately seeking to silence it through the courts. Do you agree with our list? Is this a joke? Which human being do you think is actually a supervillain? Don't ever f mention my name again. For more mind-blowing top 10s published every day, be sure to subscribe to WatchMojo.com. I don't want people throwing chipmunks at me. No, like, no, no, you, know, you know, you really don't want that. No. People will do that just to mess <laughs> with me.